Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Smark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be showing you how to install Graphene OS from a fresh Pixel device. Now Graphene OS is only available on Pixels primarily because the other softwares like One OS and other operating systems like OnePlus, Color OS and those kind of things, Oxygen OS, basically a rebranded version of um, Color OS. Whereas with Pixels, that is not an issue. It should work on every version of Pixel, at least for the last couple ones. Uh, today I'm gonna be using a Pixel 6a, as you can see here. Um, I'm gonna have a various different setups while going through this video, so be sure it's gonna be much better production quality than my last video. Um, so in this video, we're going to be showing you how to install Graphene OS. It doesn't matter if you're a noob or an advanced user and just looking to do it. We're going to be running it through on a fresh pixel. It's not, it doesn't have Graphene OS on it right now. It's going to though, by the end of this video, I haven't done this in a while. So I'm going to be running it through you. I might encounter some errors and stuff along like that along the way or any issues. And maybe that will help you also to be able to figure it out on your own. Now, guys, as we go through this video, we're going to be mentioning some of my favorite products. Um, if you guys like this video, if you like these informative type videos, let me know down in the comments down below. Um, in this video, we're going to be sponsored by two VPN products. Now, if you guys didn't know, I'm the guy who made the first VPN tier list. I've ranked every VPN objectively with data-driven analysis. So if you guys are looking for helpful VPN advice, make sure to bookmark VPN tier list and check it out. Tor Guard and Surfshark are both A tier VPNs that have sponsored this video. Um, they're excellent VPNs to check out. A VPN complements Graphene OS beautifully since it anonymizes your IP address and makes you more anonymous on the web, especially from your internet service provider or if you're in a mobile cafe or something like that. Um, also very good for torrenting too. So make sure to check out both of those VPNs. I'll be putting links in the description down below. I've also done v uh, reviews on them on the channel too. All right, guys, we're also going to be talking about Graphene OS in this video. So, guys, we're going to be getting to the installation uh, very soon. Um, but there are some questions you might have when you're starting out with Graphene OS. I already covered the fact that you do need a pixel. But another question that I've seen and kind of thought about is how do you use your eSIM on Graphene OS? Uh, what do you do when you switch to Graphene OS from a pixel? Um, and well, the good news is your eSIM is compatible. If you have an eSIM on your Graphene OS or your Pixel device and you move to Graphene OS, it will stay there. The same thing with a SIM card. But are you necessarily happy with this service that you're on? You might be paying a lot of money too much. That's kind of how I was. Now I was formerly using Verizon and my bill was pretty expensive but there are some very good options out there that you guys might not be aware of. So guys, if you're thinking about switching providers or you maybe want something different, I have two options for you that work very well with Graphene OS. Now, Afani um, is a very interesting service. It's kind of like a middleman that makes your normal cell phone service much more secure. If you're worried about stuff like SIM swaps, especially if you're doing cryptocurrency or anything like that on your Graphene OS device, or you just want the most secure kind of phone service, that's Afani. Now, if you use my link in the description down below and my code, um, Tom Spark, um, you should be able to get $99 off this service. Now, Afani basically makes it so um, you have people protecting your account for you, um, and it uses the kind of big carriers in the United States, um, so you're going to have pretty good speeds and everything like that. It's going to be $99 per month per user or $1,000 a year. There's no activation fees or anything like that. It has insurance coverage as well, and there's no contract too. So this is a pretty good deal. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other options out there, but you're kind of paying more to have that additional um, security. This is probably one of the best partnerships and pairings with Graphene OS if you're worried about swim swaps. So it's definitely something I would recommend if you want the complete package with Graphene OS, the kind of best kind of security solution. Fani is an excellent choice. And I'll be putting links for both of these in the description down below if you do want to change your eSIM um, or SIM card uh, with Graphene OS. One other thing I did want to mention before starting the video, and I'm sorry for so much preamble, um, but there has been some kind of slander and negativity around the Graphene OS ecosystem. If you're not aware of this, don't worry about it. If you're kind of wondering if you should use Graphene OS for some of these concerns, well, I would encourage you to check out some of my videos on the topic. Um, there have been a lot of naysayers around Graphene OS, probably because it's so good. Some controversial figures like Luis Rossman and people like Techlore who just kind of want attention and kind of want to endanger one of these 
of the Graphene OS project, which I believe is the best open source and secure operating system for mobile devices that you can find. Um, so just don't really pay attention to that FUD. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me here. Now we're about to start the tutorial. All right, guys, so pretty much what you want to going to do first is go to grapheneos.org. This is how we're going to launch the installer. And the first thing you're going to want to do is click install Graphene OS. Once you do this, you're going to have two options. You have the web-based USB installer or the command line installation guide. I would recommend the web-based USB installer since it is the easier method and requires less technical know-how as specified here. And guys, just to, so you're aware, there are multiple Graphene OS chat channels where you could chat with other Graphene OS users if you do have issues. But hopefully that does not happen and that's one reason we're doing this video. So guys, let's go ahead and do a brief overview of some of the prerequisites, you should at least have two gigabytes of free memory available and 32 gigabytes of free storage space. You're going to need a USB cable for attaching the device to the laptop or desktop. So basically you're going to need to plug your phone into your computer to do this method. It also recommends a high quality USB-C cable. Um, I would recommend one that is capable of data transfer, a high quality one. Some of the scuff ones are good. Some of the more high quality ones are good. Just not, you know, this kind of cheap Chinese ones. Um, you should avoid using a USB hub, such as a front panel on a desktop top computer case or something like that connect directly to a rear port on a desktop or the ports on a laptop it says this is a common kind of issue with graphene os it also says installing from an os in a virtual machine is not recommended usb path through is often um, not reliable so install os running on a bare metal virtual machines are not configured to have proper memory memory and storage space um, so these are the officially stored um, um, ecosystems um, so we want to make sure it's up to date before starting um, so the official supported browsers are chromium and these kind of things um, today we're going to be using brave and you want to make sure to disable your brave shields so that is something we should um, do first, um, do not use incognito. You want to use one of the officially supported devices, so make sure it's a Pixel device. Now you probably just want to use an unlocked device. I would recommend that before using something that's like on Verizon or something like that. And that's one reason why I said using an unlocked device with these different carriers is probably the, my go-to recommendation. It says here, it's best practice to update the device before installing Graphene OS to have the latest firmware for connecting the device to the computer. So let's go ahead and make sure we are up to date. I think last time I ran into that issue. So guys, let's go ahead and move into um, this panel here. Um, so here we have our device. Now what we're going to do is... Um, make sure it's properly updated. So we're just gonna put it here just so it looks good on the video. Um, and what we're going to do is go to system and then we're gonna to try to find out how to update it. Now I haven't used this pixel in a while. As you can see, there is some kind of update. Um, it looks like Android 14. Um, so there you go. All right, so this is going to take a little bit and we'll get back to you once this is done. All right, guys, we have fully updated the Android operating system. Um, so what we need to do now is to enable OEM unlocking, as it says from the guide. So you can see on the page here, it says enable OEM locking. You do need to do something first. So you go to about phone. And once you're here, we need to tap the build number. So let's go ahead and find the build number. Here it is at the bottom. So we need to press this. Uh, just keep pressing it till it unlocks developer options. So there you go. So let's go to system. And then let's see if we could find the developer options. There we go. And there we go. We found it. All right, so now we need to go to uh, OE. We need to enable the OEM unlocking. Um, so it looks like it's already enabled on mine, which is good. Um, so, so according to the guide, it says on traditional Linux distributions, USB devices cannot be used as non-root without UD rules for each type of device. This is not an issue for other platforms. So on Arch Linux, install the Android UDF package. On Debian and Ubuntu, install Android SDK Platform Common Tools Package. So make sure to do that if you're on a Linux distribution. Uh, if you're on Linux, maybe read a little bit of this as well. 
But now what we need to do is we need to boot the device into the bootloader interface. You need to hold the volume down button while the device boots. The easiest approach is to reboot the device and begin holding down the down button until it boots up into the bootloader interface. Alternatively, turn off the device, then boot it up while holding. Let's do this one. So let's turn off the device. So we're turning off the device. Um, so let's boot up the device while holding the volume down button. All right, so we're gonna hold down the volume down button. So this is what it looks like right now. All right, so we have now entered the bootloader interface. So now we need to connect the device to the computer. Um, on Windows, you need to install a driver for Fastboot if you don't already have it. No driver is needed on other operating systems. You can obtain the driver from Windows Update, which will detect it as an optional, someone in my Discord's talking to me, as an optional update when the device is booted into the bootloader interface. Open Windows Update, run a check for updates, and view optional updates. Install the driver for Android bootloader interface as an optional update. Alternative approach is obtaining the Windows Fastboot driver or pixels from Google and manually installing it. So let's go ahead and see that. Optional updates, driver. Okay, and uh, the guide was right. So let's go ahead and install this. That's pretty easy to do. I was kind of worried it wouldn't show that, but I guess since it's connected, it that's why it worked. So it looks like we have done that. Um, so now we need to unlock the bootloader. So I, we just click this button and it wants to connect to this. It doesn't seem to be letting us connect. So we got to click on it and then it will do it. All right. Now the device is asking us, it says, um, the website says bootloader unlocked. So we need to use the volume button to confirm the selection. So let's see what happens. Unlock the bootloader or do not unlock the bootloader. Um, we want to select unlock the bootloader. So we're going to click that and it looks like it was uh, unlocked. So now we need to obtain the factory image of Graphene OS. So we've done this step. So press this button to download the release. So now it is downloading it. All right, guys, we are just about done downloading this thing. So once this is done, the initial install will be performed by flashing the factory images. This will replace the existing OS installation. Um, so I guess once this is done, I uh, will click on this button and then it should uh, do something. Uh, so looks like it's just kind of doing this still. Haven't done much different to it. Um, all right, so it's almost done. I wonder if it's going to say completed when it's done. It's filled up the blue bar, but I'm not sure if it's 100% done. So I might just wait a couple seconds to see if it's doing anything else. Oh, okay. Downloaded. All right. So now let's click flash release. Seems to be doing something. Um, wait for the flashing process to complete. It will automatically handle flashing the firmware, rebooting into the interface, flashing the core, blah, 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 blah. Avoid interacting with the device and the little flashing script is finished and the device is back. Then proceed to locking the bootloader before using the device. So after this is done, we got to set the bootloader interface to locked. So this seems like some kind of security thing. Um, right now it's kind of just going like this. It still just says a uh, writing system extension. All right. So we came back and looks like we're back in this thing. Um, all right, so we need to lock the uh, bootloader. So let's just click on this and then we'll do, uh, we'll select it, um, lock the bootloader and then we'll, we'll confirm. All right, we've done this setting now. Post installation, you've now successfully installed Graphene OS and can boot it, pressing the power button with the default start option selected in the bootloader will boot the OS. All right, so now we just click this little power button and start it up. Um, OEM and Lockheed can be disabled again in the developer settings menu within the operating system. Um, after disabling OEM and Lockheed, we recommend disabling developer options that's not being used for app or OS development. Um, so there you go, it's showing us our pixel launching Graphene OS, as you could see. 
Um, oh yeah, pretty easy. Not too hard at all, right guys? Um, so the verified boot and attestation features provided by supported devices can be used to verify the hardware. Um, so most of the stuff is just some extra stuff you guys could check out. Um, you can also flash it with a stock OS if you want. So that is about it guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of this tutorial. Looks like we got it up and running. Um, let me know down in the comments down below if you want to see more tutorials on Graphene OS. Do you want to see a video on what to do next? Um, I'm probably going to be making that. Stick around for that. Um, also, I'll be making videos on, you know, some of the best apps on Graphene OS, how to set it up, how to put a VPN on it maybe, um, everything like that. Um, so guys, if you liked this video, make sure to check out some of my sponsors. It'll really help support the channel. Great products, all of them. Whether you need some service for a prepaid plan like Mint, or if you want the, you know, true anonymous SIM swappable, anonymous uh, preventable SIM swappable Ifani, or if you need a VPN. Thanks for checking out this one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.